Hey guys, my name is Rick. Thank you for tuning in. If you didn't see my last video on my Tesla solar system, you can check that out. It's in my playlist and or I'll link it below. But just a quick recap, I have a, very, I have a flat roof. We have 24 solar panels. It's a 9.6 kilowatt system with two power walls and of course the inverter and all that good stuff, all done through Tesla. Um, price was about 38 grand and we're looking at about $12,000 of tax incentives. At least that's what it was. It may have got up. Uh, the system wasn't actually officially active until February, about February 20th of this year. So we'll put that on this year's taxes. So it should be a nice savings there. Um, initially, when we planned the system, we didn't have the electric vehicles and our average electric bill was about $170 a month. With the Volt and the Tesla Model Y, added about $50 to $60 a month to our bill. So I'll take, we'll take a look at my... Um, bills since February here and the usage on um, TEP's website. And then we're going to take a look at the app and I'm going to show you energy usage and some other cool things on the app so you get an idea of, of energy production. So far, I can honestly say um, everything seems to be going very well. I'm pretty happy with the system. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, surprisingly, we've actually had a few backups. Uh, the power walls kicked on and the, when the power was out for 10 minutes, I think was the longest one. There was a couple other that were less than five minutes. They're doing some construction down the road and it's pretty seamless. It's quite interesting. We do have one clock in the house. I think it's the oven, if I remember correctly, um, is the only one that gets tripped and we have to change the time on it. It seems like everything else isn't affected by when the power shuts off. So kind of interesting there. All right, so let's take a quick look at my TEP bill and then we will take a look at the app and I'll show you some interesting numbers there and give you an idea of how much energy we're actually producing. All right, guys, so this is a view of my electric bill since May of 21 to April of 23. Pretty common pattern around here. Uh, summertime months are pretty high, and then in the winter months and fall, it's not so bad at all. Um, looking at February of 23, you can see our bill was 20188 and we only had solar activated for a bit, about eight days of that month. And we produced about 340 kilowatt hours of energy. Um, the difference between this February and if you look back at February of 22, was only 13611. That's the electric cars that were added to the family. Um, for that month. So that's the big change there. You can see in March our bill was down to 3386 and then we had a credit in April and actually the credit right now I just was on the site looking uh, is over $60. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes in the summer. I'm assuming that um, the credit's probably going to go down. We'll probably have a little bit of a bill. You can see here you know, September, August, July, and June, the electric bills are 300 plus. Um, that's from running AEC in a slump block house with a flat roof. So um, the power walls are really going to come into play this summer, I'm hoping, and will cover most of that AC during the day. So we, hopefully that's how it works out anyway. But um, so far, so good as far as the solar is, is going here. So let's take a quick look uh, let's, at the app and we'll look at some of that stuff. I really think, just on a quick side note, I really think the key to this whole setup is having power walls because that runs the house during peak hours. So you're saving even more money by doing that, which is actually really cool. Um, for us, there's two different seasons. We just switched into this quote unquote summer season and I think that was actually in April, sorry, at the end of, yeah, anyway, it's either April or the beginning of this month, I can't remember now, but right now peak hours are from three in the afternoon till seven in the evening. And so during that time, the power walls pretty much cover everything that we need. And we, so far, we haven't had to use the AC during the day. We're not really here that much, but we run it at night because uh, it's off peak hours and it just runs off the power walls anyway, so it's not a big deal. So that's all really cool. Um, I thought it would be kind of neat to take a look at the app and show you some different values and show you how you can use the app 
Um, I'm still not great at it, but at least to give you an idea of the energy uh, production that we've been having. And it'll show you, you can kind of see the cloudy days. Um, and then if you have a Tesla solar system, I want you to check out the um, graph on our energy production. Some of the days we have this really interesting pattern that seems to repeat itself, and I'm not really sure why. And generally speaking, those days did not have any clouds. So um, I actually went up on the roof today to look at the panels and they were a little bit dusty. And here's a little bit of footage of that, but they weren't like hideously covered with dirt or anything. Definitely dusty, but so I cleaned them off and uh, maybe that'll make a difference. I'm not sure if that's what's going on. But if you've seen a similar pattern and you know what it is, please let me know. But let's take a quick look at the app and uh, I'll show you some kind of cool stuff on there. Okay, so here we're taking a look at the app and what you're seeing here is energy production for the month of February and you'll see the total solar generation was 341.3 kilowatt hours. And again, we started around the 20th of February. This is the month following, which is March. And you can see we did 14,003.6 kilowatt hours. And I believe over here on the right where it says 60.1, that was our max production. And then here's April, 1801.5. Again, not so many cloudy days. And then there's March. And you can see we're up to the 13th today is only halfway generated. So this has actually been a pretty good month up to 731.7 so far. Now we're going to go back to the days. This is today. You can see it's a pretty nice smooth curve. This was yesterday and this is a little bit of that pattern I was talking about. You see how it's kind of identical in the morning and the evening. I have no idea what that is. Here's a little bit worse. That was a little bit of clouds, but you can see that pattern repeats like that one almost looks like a mirror image and I have no idea why that would be. I was thinking maybe this would be quick the way the sun's going over the panels or something, but none of these days are really cloudy, so I'm not 100% sure what that was about. And then this is just looking at home usage. Um, some of this I don't pay that much attention to. Most of it I really just look at the, uh, the energy generation is what I look at for the most part. But you can see this is where uh, the peak energy use is in the afternoon, or the peak costs are in the afternoon, so we don't use much around there. Generally speaking, the uh, power walls will kind of cover that area. That's a quick update on our solar system. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can leave those below. And if you have any ideas on what's causing that pattern in my energy production screen, I'd love to hear it. Possibly it's the fact that the sun's so overhead right now and the distance between the panels, as you can kind of see here, and the angle that they're at, that production's slightly delayed as the sun passes directly overhead. I don't know. Shot in the dark. Um, if you're considering purchasing a solar uh, system, please consider using our code and you'll find that below. If you have any questions, as I mentioned, please leave them below. Happy to help out if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.